Welcome to the 72nd episode of the Schmidt House Podcast. I'm your host, Zach. On this episode, I talk about some of my perspectives around the Freedom Convoy on the uh, one year anniversary of when it took place. But before we begin, if you haven't already, subscribe to my show on Rumble. I post exclusive content there called Shorts. A couple of my recent episodes on there is me talking about the Project Veritas Pfizer Expose and 15 Minute Cities. I also have started streaming late night video game sessions on Twitch. I'll have it linked in the description box. Next week, I'm going to start streaming Hogwarts Legacy. So if that interests you, check out Schmidt House Plays on Twitch. The, again, the link is in the description box. And now, on to the Freedom Convoy. So as it's the one year anniversary of the Freedom Convoy, I wanted to do an episode kind of giving some retrospective uh, thoughts on it and some information that's kind of popped up in between now and then. I really think that the Freedom Convoy should go down as one of uh, Canada's most historical significant significant events. Um, I mean, it should be right up there with our war efforts in Europe over the world wars, um, our technological and human rights advancements, uh, and you know, essentially like helping th- to spread that globally. You know, um, lots of our other prides and. Um, successes and achievements for that all Canadians, whether it's doctors or, um, you know, dare I say politicians, uh, think people that have done good and really put Canada on the map. I think the truckers convoy, the freedom convoy should be up there with lots of those other historical significant events. And, um, purely because if you look at what, what we were faced with, no matter what you believe as far as the pandemic goes, it's pretty much accepted that there was a huge overreach, except for those people that are deep in the COVID cult. But um, what they did to be able to advance uh, civil rights in, in such a peaceful way, I think is like the, the important thing. The, uh, the Freedom Convoy essentially was able to express thoughts of the frustrations and uh, you know the plight of so many Canadians and it's that expression of freedom and the movement and just showcasing that our chartered rights, something that we're supposed to hold in extremely high regard in Canada was violated. And, you know, the, the fact that there are so many people, not just like truckers, but people that were going there to support them, people that went to Ottawa to, you know, provide support and, and, and back up and stuff like that for what they're doing. It's, it was really, really good to see. And I'm fully aware of that there might be some, I don't want to say misinformation, but there's obviously blatant lies from what went down in Ottawa. And, you know, there's people that are in support of it, uh, impartial, didn't really pay attention or kind of clueless or completely a part of the cult that hates freedom. And I think that the government is able to prey on that one specific cult to be able to spread a certain narrative that's kind of just resonated right across Canada and ultimately allowed them to use the Emergencies Act to be able to squash the most uh, peaceful protest in Canadian history. So part of me talking about these, uh, about my perspectives pertaining to the convoy is to hopefully be able to give some, maybe just a different perspective, whether, um, you know, depending on what your thoughts on it are. But my whole point in, in talking about it, uh, you know, I covered it a little bit when it was happening, but specifically right now is because there's we still haven't been able to get to some level of objective truth and reconciliation of about what actually happened. I do hope the emergencies in the emergency inquiry that they did. Um, I think the results are kind of supposed to come out in the next two weeks or so here. Uh, my hope is that it sheds some light on what actually happened there to your average everyday people to such an extent that the mainstream media can't lie about it. Now, we already know that Justin Trudeau wanted to uh, have access to it earlier before the public, and we all know why. Um, His um, aunt's husband was the judge who was moderating the inquiry, um, which he, he, he appointed as well. It wasn't like it was a a citizen led effort on that front, you know, but I, my, my whole, I'm kind of bringing it back. We need to see some type of objective truths from this. We need to be able to say that what global and CTV and CBC and all of the other state funded media 
were saying was lies because here's the receipts, here's the evidence, here's the video of all of these live streamers that documented it, right? That is something that I think we need to work towards. And hopefully that this episode of the podcast can help do that. So um, as far as the trucker convoy goes, I was in full support of it uh, from the very start. As soon as I kind of started hearing uh, rumors and like people putting out information, I was completely behind it. Um, I did have a few thoughts about it before some were optimistic. Uh, you know, I thought, hey, you know, they could really flip the script on absolutely everything. There's also some ones that were a little bit more negative. Um, ones that were saying like, I didn't expect anything to actually come of it, which it's where, what, the, what the actual results are in it or the resolution of it. And uh, we kind of won't get towards that until we hear the end of the inquiry. Um, because that's kind of just part and parcel with it, but it's somewhere in between. I don't think it was the big, great, big positive movement that it should be. Although, like, I'm not knocking it. It was good, um, but there should have been the history should have been different. I'll put it that way. Um, and it wasn't as bad as I had anticipated on the other end, or, or like kind of thought as well. Um, because there was there was there was there's next to no negatives on this. So, um, I mean, obviously the smearing kind of sucks, but you know. Um, my whole thing is, uh, as part of getting to the truth is I'm going to shout out some people who were doing live streams. I took part in watching lots of them over that point in time. Um, so shout out to Viva Fry War Campaign, Hale, Row, um, Transplender, Ferryman's Toll, Dan Dix, Auto Walks, Live from the Shed, Rebel News, uh, even Maxine Bernie was out there quite frequently, um, yeah, there, there's so many others that I, I aren't on that short list that completely deserve. Um, Greg Wycliffe would be one, um, you know, that deserve the praise for documenting what was going down there um, and, and putting in that effort to be able to bring the side of the story that the media really wasn't, you know. And uh, that is something that I want to kind of bring to light. So there's a couple names that I mentioned there. Um, check out, you, you know, you can even just... Uh, search them on YouTube, people will pop up and you can check their coverage out if you're wanting for more like actual footage of what happened those, uh, you know, over the month of February in Ottawa. So kind of my story from the start is when the uh, trucker convoy started going and, you know, it was coming from Calgary and whatnot. I was going to come through Regina. So I brought my family to go see it, <laughs> excuse me, to go see it. Uh, my son specifically was at an age where he was really uh, in love with semis. He called them Mises kind of semi backwards. Um, but yeah, he was in love with them. So I'm like, Oh, this will be awesome. We'll be able to see it. But the Regina cops and the, and the, um, government in true blue conservatives, Saskatchewan, uh, blocked them from actually entering the city. They're supposed to enter into the city and then go down one of the main uh, streets there, um, to connect up with highway one. And they forced them to take the bypass instead. So this was just like this from the start had me kind of like thinking a little bit about it not being maybe like the most widespread movement that I was hoping that was necessary because there was just like in Regina in one of the most conservative or the most conservative province in um in Canada had so much pushback um you know as far as them wanting to avoid having to mention it or having to have more people see it you know asking hey why are there all these trucks driving down Victoria Avenue in Regina Right? It would make people start asking questions. So right from the start, you can see that they are completely kind of co-opted from the top down. Um, so anyways, it, it didn't go through Regina, but we were able to make it to the bed pa the bypass before it was bedtime for my son. Um, so we saw a couple, but it wasn't much. But the thing that kind of really, and this is like a universal testament right across the board, is when we were coming across the bypass, all across the overpass on, on you know both sides, there is just tons and tons of people there's cars parked everywhere canada flags everywhere and uh you know there's just people that were really ready to cheer these people on because the, it got to the point after being in this covid mess for two years that people were fed up you know and um i think that with the amount of people that couldn't go to ottawa but wanted to show support lining the highway um I think that really shows a testament of, of like the scale of it, you know, and then I went to um, I went to have some of the protests at the legislature building in Regina um, and 
it was awesome to see so many people there. It was awesome. The The atmosphere was great. Um, I did have like run in with like a, a couple weird people that I'm like, okay, hey, you are definitely trying to start shit, um, you know, and kind of derail it. And um, there's cops there. There was, it was, it was something I think I'm so glad I experienced. I wish more people could have. And if that was what it was, you know, like in Regina, I'm sure Ottawa was just off the, off the chains but um with the with the with what i saw in regina too there's kind of the downside to it there is a lot of people so it was surprising to me is as uh, when you're standing on uh, the corner of albert street uh right in front of the ledge because they actually blocked it off so we wouldn't have access to the the legislature building which was kind of silly so we just hung out on albert street instead but um there's so many people giving the finger yelling and screaming at us and, and all that stuff um i covered this in one of my shorts too so if you want a little bit more uh accurate of some stuff that i was at, uh, experienced and at that point in time you can check out the uh, shorts episode i can't remember which one it is but um it's called regina protest anyways um it just it was i was so surprised with how many people were against this and yelling and screaming and stuff like that you know so um but <clears throat> my experience with uh with the convoy at, at that point in time, um, you know, and, and seeing all of the live streams from all of the people in Ottawa and stuff like that. Um, there are so many testimonials of, um, and about the patriotism and the hope that the, the movement gave people it, it, it helped people that were having suicidal thoughts shake that because they finally had hope after being completely downtrodden for two for two years okay um there's canadian flags everywhere there's a level of patriotism and love of my country that i personally haven't experienced i know for sure since the 2010 olympics where Sidney crosby uh scored the game winning goal in vancouver to win the gold and all of that stuff like i remember that's an, an event that i remember very vividly but that's like I would say that would be like one of the first times that I had pride in Canada to like such like it's just Canada's for the most part lots of the things are just kind of mad like you don't really you, we don't have the 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 culture and the patriotism that the Americans do and that's why I, I love America for that um, Canada just doesn't it's very rare and far, few and far between as far as like when we actually get to feel that type of um, that sense of of patriotism. So the Olympics and then the truckers protest is when I've been able to feel that, you know, and it took me 12 years to be able to feel that much pride for my, for my country. And the one, the last time it was, it was a damn hockey game. Like it's just what they did was so significant. And there's so many people that have shared that Testament as well. Um, you know, and it just goes to show how bad things were. Canada was going to hell in a handbasket and the draconian lockdowns and the COVID restrictions were just, I, in my mind, we're going to get worse, you know? So to kind of sum up my thoughts on uh, the convoy in one word, it would be hope. The hope that it gave so many, including myself, uh, I was kind of at wit's end. I was like, I just want something to happen. Someone's got to do something. Um, or, or it's not someone, but like enough someones, you know, to collectively cause change. I was really hoping that uh, something would happen and then the truckers happened, you know. Um, every night at 7 o'clock, I would go out and, and just honk my horn in support of the truckers. Probably annoyed my neighbors, but um, but yeah, it was just like, it's all of those feelings that really came out of me during that time, you know, and it, it did give hope. You know, I, I've, I've watched lots of videos of people saying about how much this brought them hope and, you know, um, Tamara Leach is a good person to search on that. She ha just has stories of, uh, uh, that she's put on uh, during her interviews about stories that people have told her and stuff. So, um, you know, this decentralized effort is, is very, very significant. And uh, it really just showed the difficulties that Canadians were having with our totalitarian rule of the federal government. So how this all ended... Obviously, the Emergencies Act was used to be able to squash this. It was completely unnecessary. Um, it was complete overuse of authority. They had completely unmarked police officers that were um, assaulting people. 
uh, with no justification. It was it was all just crap, you know. And I think anybody that knows the truth can see that and kind of discern what is uh, what it was necessary if you want to view it as necessary and what wasn't. I think uh, there's there's enough people that can kind of realize that the um, you know the the main point where it was really like this is pretty serious is when that poor lady was um, trampled on by a horse and there was another guy that tramp was trampled on the horse and I don't know what happened to that dude but like. It was amazing that through this whole process with what the RCMP and their cronies and pro perhaps some United Nations uh, soldiers as well came in and and did to those people in Ottawa. Um, it saddens me to an extent as, as high as, as as I loved my country at that point during the truckers protest. The Emergencies Act killed all of that. And that's exactly what these politicians wanted. That's exactly what the goal was. Um, you know, and what the one sign other thing I should probably should have mentioned earlier is the one significant event is it really made the Conservative Party, uh, the CPC, change their tune on lots of things. It made the Conservative premiers actually ha have a Conservative uh, value. Um, it exposed Jason Kenney so much that they removed him from office. Fantastic. Hopefully Chairman Mo is one that gets the boot next um, because he was, he was, he was, as much as Saskatchewan had probably the least restrictions across Canada, Chairman Mo um, was absolutely just as bad as anybody else uh, in the way that he shamed people and othered people within the province of Saskatchewan. And it's reprehensible. And he's never had any kind of like um, um, kind of persecution in any sort of way for it, which is, I think, come on, Saskatchewan, time to step up. But yeah, it made them all change their tune, you know, and then like, <clears throat> if we look at even like the truckers leadership, there's lots of Tamara Leach, I thought was was great. Um, you know, she was arrested a couple of times uh, on just basically bullshit charges. It's it's it was crap. Like we have po we have political prisoners in Canada. You know, you got guys like Pat King, which I think was just the one, a, a huge grifter. Um, you know, and speaking of grifters, we got. BJ Dichter, who I am not, I am so convinced that he was a, a fed plant. It's the way that I, I remember, I remember this so vividly. He was in a uh, Twitter space, uh, Twitter spaces. Uh, they're like, um, kind of like chat rooms, but it's, it's, it's audio only. And you can kind of, um, bump around and, uh, get pe different people's takes and stuff like that. And anyway, so, uh, on one of these Twitter spaces, uh, after being called out by um, Transplender pretty hard, I think the day, a couple of days leading up to this um, about some accounting and stuff like that. And, you know, he was just like, oh, I don't know what's going on and, and, and all that bullshit. But uh, BJ Dichter was in there saying that he's like, there's no way we're leaving. We're going to stand up. Uh, this, I think, was either on, uh, on the eve of the uh, Emergencies Act or right after the day that it, or the evening that it had passed. And he said, we're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. Hold the line, all of this stuff. And he fucked off out of Ottawa so quick. He fucked off. It was like the road runner just, <laughs> and, um, it was, it was just like, what, if you're in there, you know, so many people are listening to you on Twitter and you're saying, hold the line, we're not leaving. And then you're the first one to, um, to leave while all of the other people, all of the other people that were in the trucker leadership, um, got arrested. I can't remember the dude's name, but he was a, a sniper with the RCMP charged for, um, protecting the, in charge of protecting the prime minister. He got arrested. He submitted to Merrill Leach, Pat King, even though Pat King wasn't really a part of it, but like all of these guys got arrested and taken into custody and BJ Dichter just fucked off. You know, he's, he was, a, he's a fed for sure. And I remember one where I was watching war campaigns, um, uh, coverage of the emergencies act inquiry a couple months ago. And, um, when he was on, when he was on the stand testifying, it was just, the chat was just fed, 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 fed rat, fed rat. So I know I'm not the only one that, that thinks that. So it wasn't my point in bringing this up is that it's not without its own scrutiny, um, to play the devil's advocate, though, like it did kind of pop up out of nowhere, uh, have go GoFundMe um, and gives and goes and stuff like that. 
pop up out of nowhere have tens of millions of dollars that they're having to distribute and help out so i i understand like it was a chaotic mess but to transplanders to transplanders point is there had to be some type of accountability here with all that money hire an accountant to try to sort this stuff out and, and start tracking this stuff and make sure that people are being um given the funds appropriately and and, and all of this stuff and it doesn't look like you guys are just skimming it off the top and, and pocketing it pocketing it you know so there there's tons of different issues with that and I just wanted to bring that, that kind of that point up is to say that these people aren't, um, you know, without certain faults. But um, the inquiry was the other thing that I wanted to talk about pertaining to the convoy. Um, I think it was all just a ruse. It was smoke and mirrors. It was um, basically just a circle jerk for the um, the government and the, the power that be to find someone to blame and point fingers. And the whole point of the inquiry was to show the government was had the burden was had the burden of proof to try to show show why they needed to use the Emergencies Act, and it seemed that throughout that entire process, what it was all trying to do outside of pointing fingers at everybody else and ask basically stupid questions like "What'd you have for breakfast this morning?" Um, you know, and then they bring like. Yeah, it, it was just, it was a load of crap, but their whole goal was to just vilify and try to smear everything pertaining to the Freedom Convoy. Uh, I will probably make another video just talking about the results of the um, of the inquiry at a later date. Uh, it does, like, uh, like I said, it does come out in two weeks, so hopefully we do find out some of that information. The, la uh, the last point that I wanted to bring up as well. Um, I've talked about this on one of my shorts as well, where I talk about Pfizer. So Pfizer, um, there's a whole thing. You can obviously, the Project Veritas kind of has been doing an expose on Pfizer. It's basically proof that they've been doing some sort of gain of function research on it, on the virus and ma manufacturing vaccines and doing a bunch of sketchy shit uh, that they're that they're getting away with on these massive government contracts while the government has sold your tax money to these companies and um you know moderna j and j all that stuff but basically it it blew the lid off of absolutely everything and it really showed why lots of the things that the truckers were doing completely justified how it shows how the um covid there's so much bullshit around covid and all of that stuff so I would highly recommend, I will link uh, that expose. You can watch it for yourself. I'll also link my short that I did so you can kind of hear me talk about it as well. Um, but it just is absolutely insane. It took three years of this to finally have it exposed to the point that we can hopefully get some type of re re a resolution from it and say, okay, these people are wrong. These people are guilty. And let's start getting Nuremberg 2.0 and having public trials with severely heavy heavy consequences for all of these people involved i really hope project veritas has more to expose pertaining to this and then we can actually there's enough people on board that's saying hey here it is here's the receipts fuck you you guys are going down that's what needs to happen okay anybody involved anybody that had knowledge of this anybody that went along with with any of this stuff get them the fuck out of office um Another, another, another last point before I kind of come to conclusion here. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to um, David Whitehead, uh, DW Truth Warrior. He's a friend of the podcast. He did a, a mini documentary. It's called uh, "The Canadian Truckers Truckers Were Right." Um, I'm gonna have that linked in the description box as well. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, whether you're like um, kind of a, a seasoned pro on what was going on with um, with the convoy. Or if you have no clue what's going on, it's also a fantastic video to send to people to even just see what their opinion of it is. Um, yeah, check that out. It, it, David did a really, really good job, kind of a, a little expose on everything that. So um, I do want to close with kind of just a short summation of why I think that this is important. So. Without a doubt, we have been persecuted by our government, the police, society, um, the media, and crazy enough, even people that love us and should have uh, posterity at heart. 
Um, my fear is that if we don't get to objective truths, is that um, th this there's going to be events like this that happen again. And we're going to be forced into a complete degradation of society. And, that, and that's my fear. And all it does is starts with a conversation. It starts with sharing a video uh, like David's or like this one or even many of the other live streams that lots of people put out there. Um, and like I said, it starts with a conversation. You can be that change. you got to be brave. Let's start working together uh, and uniting people rather than trying to separate and, and, and tribalize it all. You know, you can be the change. And I think that's really, really important. COVID was a huge psyop, probably a psyop that we have never, to a scale that we have never seen before. Okay. It was all a ruse to usher in a totalitarian communist state. Now, quick shout out to the People's Party of Canada and Maxime Bernier. What they, what he was doing and the party was doing during the whole time of COVID when the conservatives was marching in lockstep with everything that the Trudeau liberals were doing, Maxine Bernier was out there talking about freedom and making it popular, making a movement such as the truckers uh, or the freedom convoy possible. I truly believe that. Um, I think if that's, um, that's something that I think people are unwilling to admit, but I, th I think it's true. Pierre Polyev and the rest of the conservatives did not change their tune until the truckers were at their doorstep. They would have still been supporting Trudeau wholeheartedly to this day had the truckers not done what they did. And I think that the truckers wouldn't have had as much popularity um, across Canada had Max not basically uh, done the campaigning that he did in the fall election of 2021, a couple months prior. Anyways, I just wanted to give credit where credit is due. Um, but the truckers championed freedom and they made it mainstream and they made the governments at multiple levels change their tune. Um, there's lots of people, there's lots of, I mean, nothing is without struggle. Uh, and there was lots of things that went down that I wish, um, I honestly wish that it would have had a different outcome. But um, I really do believe that we would still be in lockdowns uh, had the truckers not done what they did. Um, we took a peaceful fight to their doorstep, and I think that we won that battle. I think the war is far from over. There's still tons of COVID restrictions out there right now. Um, depending on where you live, you might not see it nearly as much. And um, I think that I, I've ta I talk about objective reality quite a bit, and I think it's something that, especially with this issue, is something that we as Canadians need to agree upon. We can't keep just slinging mud to the other side. Um, we can't, as much as I say that um, we shouldn't give any type of amnesty to any of these people, like I think, and this honestly pains me to say this, is like we have to reach across the aisle and be the bigger person on this one because it's like the end goal at the end of the day is more important, um, is being uniting people. And we need to just unite around objective truth. Now, um, Justin Trudeau and the other so-called leaders have just simply um, talked to people. Like, this is a communication issue. Had Trudeau just simply talked to people about this? Had he, when the truckers were on his doorstep, went out there and talked to these people, met with the leadership, met with the lawyers, you know, instead he called the, called everybody names, hid in, a co in his cottage, faked a COVID um, te a positive test and all of that stuff. And um, I think that I think that it's time that we realize that what he has done to this country is reprehensible, and the, the fact that he hasn't been dragged out of the House of Commons and said you are no longer allowed to rule is just insane to me. Like I even think like a hundred years ago, had this shit happened, Trudeau would have been out of there so fucking fast, you know. But he's just able to cling on, cling to power, and just as scandal after scandal, just completely get away with everything. But that's kind of my that's kind of my message: is let's unite around freedom, around objective truth, and let's get to the bottom of this and get Canada back on track because this is so much bigger than the truckers. This is so much bigger than COVID. But it starts with you, and when we all heal together and, and, and get to these truths and kind of get to that acceptance, then we can actually move on and make Canada a better place.
Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on the Freedom Convoy are. I have nothing but support for the entire movement, and I really appreciate collectively what everybody did from those who donated to the truckers, the live streamers, the ones who stood on the overpasses to champion freedom, the people that were walking the streets, supporting the businesses, cleaning up the town, cooking meals for homeless people and people around uh, around the area, all of that stuff. Um, Thank you so much for everything that you did. You really helped so many people and made an imprint on Canada that you don't even know how much that's going to resonate after the fact. I think we have the responsibility to spread this information so that we can get to an objective truth. Like, share, and subscribe, and all of that good stuff if you like what you heard. You can also find me on other social media uh, sites. You can find the links for those in the description box or check out my link tree. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day. The honking will continue until freedom improves. Because I love my country, I despise my government. Honk, honk. Stay free. Thank you for listening to the Schmidt House podcast. If you want to support the show, you can do so by sending Bitcoin or through Give, Send, Go. Links for those are in the description box. I would really appreciate it as I want to keep the podcast ad free. The Schmidt House podcast is available on the following platforms. YouTube, Odyssey, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and most importantly, Rumble. I post exclusive content on Rumble that is not found on any of the other platforms. I call them shorts. Please like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications, but most importantly, share this show with your friends. Check out the description box for more information about things that I discussed this episode and how to get in contact with me. Please reach out to me with any questions or suggestions that you have, including topics that you would like to hear me discuss. Have a great day.